guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to show you how I make easy DIY window boxes for my home. I'm going to go ahead and pop a picture in now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I just wanted to tell you why I like these so much as opposed to a traditional window box. So the first thing is obviously the cost. To get a traditional window box that's wood and looks substantial and the style I was going for would have been very expensive. Whereas these I can do for under $20 a piece. The other thing I like is the ease of these. You can do them in an afternoon, but also a traditional window box gets incredibly heavy when you fill it with dirt and put it on your window. These, because it's just a shelf with drop downs, it keeps the weight down. The other thing I like is how easy these are to change out because you're just doing it in flower pots. I change mine out for the seasons. In the winter, I will put in some pine branches. I'll just put potting soil in and just put the pine branches in upright. They lasted all season. In the summer, spring, and fall, I use fake IKEA plants. That way I don't have to worry about watering them and they stay good for the entire season. And it's easy to change out. You can just open your window and do it from the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead right now. We'll go down to my basement. I'm gonna show you guys the products that you're gonna use and the easy steps to put it together. And then we'll go ahead and style it at the end. So the first step is gonna to be to measure how long you need the board to be. And I'm just gonna go stay within the window frames here. Mine's gonna be just under 37. And I'm gonna go ahead and touch all that up when I install the shelf, so don't worry about that. So now let me show you the other supplies you're gonna need. Once you have the length of your board figured out, the next thing you're gonna to need to think about is which flower pots you're gonna use. And I just picked these up at Home Depot. I'll go ahead and do a screenshot so you guys can see it. And I like to use these plastic ones because they stay light. I'm gonna pop this little bottom part off. If you're gonna do fake plants or herbs, you're probably gonna to wanna to take this off because neither of them is gonna to wanna to sit in soggy soil. If you're using a plant that likes to be wet, you can go ahead and leave it on. But this is the next most important part because it's gonna decide how wide of a board you get. So I ended up getting a one by eight. And I just went ahead, this is a six inch flower pot and you want it to be two inches smaller than your board about because you wanna have an overhang on both sides. That way once there's dirt in here, there'll be enough wood to support the weight. So if you're gonna use these same pots, then a one by eight will be okay. I bought a six foot length. This is the scrap I have left over after cutting out my 37 inch piece. I picked up some corner braces and this is all I'm gonna to use to mount it to the window frame. I'm gonna spray paint these white so they blend in. And then you could just stop at that, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim mine out. And this is a furring strip. This is a one by four by eight. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you a screenshot of that. The easiest way to find any of these parts if you're shopping at Home Depot is go on the website. If you enter your store's information, you can see if your store has it in stock, where in the store it's located, because I don't think they're all the same, but it'll show you the aisle and the bay, and you can go directly to where it is and pick it up. So now you've got your piece of wood cut to the dimension of your window. If you measure ahead of time, you can have them cut it for you in the store if you want, even to make it easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this one here, I'm gonna measure it. And I'm gonna find the halfway point. So this one is 35 and a half inches long. I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark at 17 and three quarters. And you're gonna go ahead and paint this so you can draw on it with pencil. If you're gonna stain it, you might wanna be a little bit more cautious. But I'm gonna do mine white to match my trim. So now that I've got that halfway point marked, the next thing I wanna do is take one of the braces I'm gonna use. Now I have used decorative braces in the past, but for this I just wanted to use something simple. This will be on the back of the house, so it's only gonna be something that I see from outside my, or like from the inside out. So I'm just gonna go on here and see about how much space that's gonna take up and just make a little line. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the square mark that off too. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna tell me this is how much space I have to work with to make it symmetrical. So 
so you can go ahead and see I can fit two pots on each side and it'll still look okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So lay the brace down, just make a mark. Now I'm gonna measure from here, where the brace is, to my center line, which is right here. And I have a little under 17, let's see, 16 and three quarters. So it's gonna be eight and three eighths. All right, so I made my mark on that one. I'm gonna make a mark on the other side while I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and again with my square, I am going to go ahead and mark that. So now if you look closely, I know the lines are faint, but you can see I've got this section here where the brace is going to go. Then I've got it divided into quarters. This is going to be, I'm going to put one pot in each section. So you're just going to take your flower pot, whichever one you decided to use, and remember that the width of your board is gonna depend on that. So this is the first piece you have to pick after you figure out the length. I'm gonna center it, and I'm just gonna trace it on the outside. Now, once I've got that done, I'm gonna go back around with the pencil and draw inside of it. And this I'm just gonna kind of eyeball. You want it to be slightly smaller. That way your pot will sit on the edge and not fall through. If you don't, make it smaller your pot's just gonna fall right through as soon as it gets dirt in it so what I did mine's about a quarter inch so I just went through made it about a quarter inch smaller than the lip of the pot that way it won't fall through and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for each of these four sections now we're gonna go ahead and cut these holes out I'm gonna start with a drill I went with the largest bit I have and I'm just gonna drill one hole close to that outline that I made on each of these. Now we're gonna be using a jigsaw to cut them out. So if your jigsaw blade will fit through that largest hole of your drill, you're good to stop there, but mine won't fit through comfortably. So I'm gonna go through and use one of these paddle bits that I have just to make the drill hole a little bit larger. Now that these holes are large enough to fit the saw blade through, we're just gonna go ahead and cut each circle out on that inner one we drew. You always wanna move the blade away from you and just keep this part steady on the wood. So now that we've got the holes cut out, we're just going to go in lightly with sandpaper. I use just hand sanding just to kind of smooth out these rough edges. And now I'm going to swap it out for this board that I've already got partially done. So this has one coat of white paint and you could go ahead and just hang it like this. It would be just like a shelf off your window, but I wanted it to have more of a traditional window box look. And I had this scrap piece of one by four by eight laying around. And I went like that and liked how it looked. So I am just gonna go ahead and trim it out the whole length and the sides. Camouflage the pots hanging beneath it. So I'm just gonna go ahead first and measure the length of this. I'm gonna cut the front piece and nail it on. I'm not gonna get fancy and miter quarter, corners or anything. I'm just gonna keep it simple. Now, if you're interested in seeing which tools I use, I do have an Amazon store and I put the ones that you could still buy, I put in there. Some of the things I have, like my jigsaw and my drill, are hand-me-downs from either auctions or my dad. So I've put in like the same brand, but the newer model. And I'm gonna wait and trim the sides out after I get it put on the window, because I learned that the hard way, my windows on the inner corner have like little notches. 
so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of fancy cutting but let me just show you guys what we got here so this is how it's gonna look we're just gonna install the brackets and then go ahead and mount it so here it is attached to the house and you can see just two screws in each side easy to remove you could even patch the holes if you were renting and I have this one actually outside my kitchen window, so this would be a great idea if you wanted a kitchen herb garden and you didn't have space or a patio. You could easily do this and then just lift your window to access the herbs. And then I just went ahead and filled all the nail holes and all the edges like here and around the side with some waterproof caulk just to keep it a little safer. So now I'm just going to go ahead and drop some fake lavender from Ikea in this. So this is the Ikea lavender I talked about, and they don't make this as of now, but they're constantly coming out with new ones. There's a really nice rosemary option, but they come in these small black pots. What I like to do is just plant it inside of these as if it was a regular plant. It looks a little more realistic that way. It doesn't blow over with the wind. And I know earlier I mentioned popping that little built-in saucer off, and I'm sure some of you were thinking, it's a fake plant, what does it matter? But because it's fake, it doesn't have roots that are going to uptake the water. So this just sits in there and gets soggy. And without the bottom off, it's just going to build up water and it's going to get really heavy. So you want it to be able to drain the extra water because it's not going to be drinking it. Alright, so now I've taken a step back and you guys can see this is how it looks. You don't see the pots hanging underneath. They only pop up a little bit, which I don't mind because it looks like terracotta. One thing I did not like is I have a cord over there, but I painted that white and that's the best I can do. But I think this looks really cool and I cannot wait until winter when I can put pine and little like twinkle fairy lights in here. I think it'll look super cute. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along on this little DIY with me. I hope you're encouraged to try it for yourself. It really requires basic tools and it's easy to finish in an afternoon. Don't wait till spring or summer. Go ahead and make them now because they look amazing in fall with mums. Or My favorite is winter when you can just tuck some pine branches in them with some battery operated Christmas lights. They really are magical then. So I wanna thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.